Hello everybody, and today is going to be the last video of the day because I have other things to do. But what I'm going to do is go through um, the first third of the City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology edited by Lawrence Ferlinghetti, 60th Anniversary Edition. Whew, what a mouthful that was, am I right, folks? And yes, um, I have a City of Los Angeles parking violation here as my bookmark, as that is really the only thing it's good for. So, because there are 60, um, there are, uh, what do you call it, little tidbits from 60 books, I figured I would go through 20 and then tell you what I thought about them. And um, that would be that. So, um, first off, number one, the first of the pocket books, pocket poets books, was um, Picture of the Gone World by Ferlinghetti, which I've already reviewed on this channel. <clears throat> and number four is Howl and Other Poems from um, Allen Ginsberg, which I already covered on this channel. So, we will skip those. And let me tell you something, folks. I, let me put this up here so you can see it. I have been wanting so damn bad to find something good. Something that, that I really like. And I think I found some things. This should be a fun little jaunt. So number two in here is 30 Spanish Poems of Love and Exile, edited and translated by Kenneth Rexroth. And I was um, happy to find um, some Garcia Lorca in here. Like, I was, I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And it was pretty good. Um, it's called the, the Weeping. In fact, all of the poems from the 30 Spanish Poems of Love and Exile were really good. They are very, erotic is not the word I would use, but they are like you feel it, like you could almost smell it while you're going through the stuff. So the poems in here are from um, Rafael Alberti, Nicholas Gullian, Pablo Neruda, Garcia Lorca, and Antonio Machado. I think is how you pronounce those names. I might have really fucked all those up. But those poems were great. So um, I honestly think I'm going to pick that book up. And I would love to do a little um, thing about how good that book was. Um, the next book in here, um, number three, is Poems of Humor and Protest by Kenneth Patchen. God damn it. This was the best collection in here. Hands down. Out of the first 20. Kenneth Patchen. Kenneth Patchen. Look at you fucking kicking my ass over here, Kenneth Patchen. The poems are accessible. They are realistic. They are full of of metaphor but done in the way you're supposed to do this and we're going to be talking a little bit about that in a bit here but um the poems he has in here are the state of the nation pastoral pastoral is probably my least favorite of them um street corner college that that was good the body beside the ties and the origin of baseball now the origin of baseball Poems like this, I typically don't like very much. It's just kind of corny. Like, it's like a little silly, um, just like a little silly goof. But the fact that he doesn't take himself too fucking seriously is so fucking refreshing. Yes, give me poets who know they're fucking douchebags and who know they're full of shit and who know that... Like, life's a fucking joke, and they are fine with it, and nobody fucking cares. Yes, please. Kenneth Patchen, Poems of Humor and Protest. I didn't get it. 
Um, yes, that is what I like. And then we go to True Minds by Marie Ponsot. These did not speak to me, okay? Um, Analog and um, Alumi, however you say that. Those were okay. And I think she is the one that started this whole fucking thing that I was getting all irritated with. Let me see. Yes. There are two words that should not ever be uttered in poetry. And this is just me. This is just me talking. Two words. Especially poetry that has been written in the last hundred years. Okay? Two words. First word, betwixt. Second word, twixt. I will allow someone eating a Twix in a poem, but Twixt and Betwixt? No, thank you. Because I know you don't fucking use those words when you speak. And I know people are like, well, it's all about the language and all this other shit. Yes, but what is the main thing of poetry? It is seeing the world through the eyes of the poet. The poet is the poetry. If you are not interested in the poet, if you do not think the poet is an interesting person, if you don't think you can relate to the poet, how the fuck can you relate to their poetry? If you don't have anything in common, if you feel like you can't even, and you don't even have to have things in common, but if you feel like you can't feel what they're feeling, if there is a divide, if there is a wall there, then that poet is not for you. And some people out there might go, dude, I use betwixt every day. So she uses betwixt, and I was just like, fuck me. And then later, who was it? I can't remember, and I should have wrote it down, but someone else in here uses twixt. And I was like, that did, and I had to fucking reread it. It was okay. I wasn't over the moon about it. Um, so number six is Here and Now by Denise Levertov. A Gypsy's Window and People at Night. This completely fell flat for me. And I remember as I was reading it, I'm like, oh my God, this is just like, there's, I'm not feeling anything from this. And, um, and again, to each their own, if somebody like, feels what that poet's saying. If they could feel that through that poet, then that poet is their poet, and that's fine. Um, I, I wasn't feeling nothing. Number seven, we have Cora in Hell, Improvis Improvisations by William Carlos Williams. Um, this just dragged, and I was not into it. Um, Gasoline is the next one. By Gregory Corso. Now, I have never read Corso. I've been wanting to read Corso. And now that I have read Ode to Coit Tower, I don't think I ever want to read Corso again. Um, there was a lot of dead language in this poem, this ode. And, of course, he has to start it off just to be edgy and cool. He has to start it off with um, phallic, like within like three or four words. We're, we're using the, the term phallic. And then the rest of it is very mundane. But, um, you know, oh, if I, if I say phallic in there, oh, shit. And yes, the times were different when he wrote this. And that might have been like a, oh, and all the gussets get damp in the room, you know. But um, it doesn't age very well, let's say. Especially with the fucking language he uses in it. Um, so that's just me. And then we have um, Paroles um, by... It's so funny, when I first read this, I'm like... Um, Jacques Prevert? Um, but it's Jacques. Probably Prevert. But... It says prevert. Um, and this is like poems. Of, I don't know where he's from. I, I don't know. But it's just like 
poems about how dumb Catholics are. Mm, let's let's get them. Um, and the Last Supper poem was like so. I don't want to say trite, but it's one thing if you're just like kind of spilling your shit. It's hard for people to judge you on that. But when you're fucking like taking a hot take on something very well known and your hot take is trivial at best, like people are going to fucking judge that. Um, okay. And then we had something that wasn't too bad. We had, um, number 10 is selected poems from Robert Duncan. I have never heard of Robert Duncan. I don't think. And, um, there's three poems in here, but two of them I'm, I could still remember like, like I just read it. So um, among my friends and the drinking fountain, um, they were both pretty okay. And like, when I say pretty okay, I just mean I enjoyed reading it as I was reading it. And when I was done reading it, I was like, huh, I would read more Robert Duncan. The imagery was vivid enough that after reading 20 other fucking things, I was like, oh yeah, hmm. So he's somebody that I would actually um, give some time to, like, um, who else do we have here? Uh, Kenneth Patchen, dude. dude. I'm so surprised I dug that Kenneth Patchen stuff, and we'll find out why in a little bit here. And then we had um, number 11 was New Young German Poets, edited and translated by Jerome Rothenberg. Oh, yeah, these were okay. Th these are okay. So we have Paul Salon Helmet Heisenbottle, um, Walter Hollerer, Heinz Piontek, Gunter Grass, and Hans Magnus Essenberger. So, for any of my German viewers out there, I apologize 100% with how fucking horrific I played that. I'm sorry. That was really bad. Um, the poems were okay. They were just okay. I might read that book if, like, I, I don't think I would go out of my way to read it. But as far as, like, the translations of people have gone so far, this is probably, like, the last on the list of the translations. So then I see the next one, number 12. It's called Anti-Poems by Nicanor Parara, translated by Jorge Elliott. And it's Vices of the Modern World. Okay, so Vice is the Modern World. The book's called Ante Poems. I was all in. I think I might have built it up a little bit, but I was not impressed. Not impressed at all. Now, here is where the fucking rubber meets the damn road. Um, number 13, The Love Poems of Kenneth Patchen. Ooh. Ken, I dug your work earlier. I, I would love to hear what's happening now. So I read these poems, and they're fucking garbage. Fucking garbage, okay? In my opinion, obviously. I was like, what the fuck happened? You were so alive and vibrant and humorous. And yes, I know these are love poems, but Jesus fucking Christ, I know when you're banging your old lady, you're not fucking talking to her like that. Okay? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, like people fuck. Just talk about fucking. Like, you could do it nicely if you want. You could say make love. You could do whatever you want. But it's okay to just fuck. Like, I don't know. I, I just, it, it was almost as if it was a completely different person. And I was just like, what the fuck? So I went and I checked it out. 
And it turns out that the first book that I was talking about, um, uh, Poems of Humor and Protest, was put out in 1954. This book, The Love Poems, was put out in 1960. So my guess is, is that somewhere over these six years, the, the new poets got to him. And, or, like, I don't fucking know. Or his fame got to the point where he thought he needed to suck up to the fucking academics. I don't fucking understand what happened, but it's, like, a completely different fucking person. If you are a fan of Patchen, can you please help me and say, oh, yeah, check this out or check this out or blah, 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 blah. This will help you. This is really good. This isn't. Um any information like this would be fucking greatly appreciated because I was about to put Patchen up on a fucking goddamn pillar and start like just going, everyone look, look at Patchen. Okay. I was like on board. I was like, nope, not going to do it now. So help me. Now here's, this is really interesting. Number 14 is Caddish. In other poems, Allen Ginsberg. Now, remember when I was doing Howl, I was talking about, like, you know, is there anything other than Howl that, like, people fucking like Ginsberg and all this other shit? And, like, what's the shit or whatever? Um, I forgot that he had other stuff in here. And so when I got to it, I was like, holy shit. And so um, what, there's two things in here. And it's part four from Caddish, which is Oh Mother... And then the next one is Two Aunt Rose. And both of these, I think, are better than the stuff in Howl that's not Howl, if that makes sense. Like, you know how Howl is Howl in other poems? Like, those other poems, I don't think are as good as these two. So that made me feel like, oh my god, maybe Ginsburg has more to him than that one note, you know? And um, <clears throat> I think both of these poems, and I think this is where Ginsburg kind of excels, and it's usually having to do um, with not just the loss of innocence, but almost as if the loss of your innocence through the eyes of someone else. And you don't even know you're losing your innocence. If that makes any sense. Like when Ginsburg's hitting those notes, he fucking shines bright as shit, dude. Super fucking bright. Um, so that was actually really, really, um, I, I was impressed. So, I think I might pick that one up as well. He is wordy as shit, and he repeats himself all the time, and I think he liked to hear the sound of his own voice. But, you know, we're not all fucking perfect here. Um, number 15, slow newsreel of man riding train. Hmm, this sounds like a good book. By Robert Nichols from Getaway. Now... I like his voice. I like how he writes. I like his voice. This poem did not speak to me at all. I had no investment in it, nothing. But I like how he writes. I like his tone. I like his voice. So I would be interested in reading more of him. I just don't want to fucking read that poem. Um, <clears throat> now this is interesting. Number 16 is Red Cats, and um, it is edited and translated by Anselm Holo, um, and I believe these are Russian um, poets, hence Red Cats, um, and what I liked about these poems, okay, is that there is a dark humor in these poems, and if that is kind of the, like, the norm, especially with this era of Russian poets, fucking sign me up. 
Like, I'm down. Let's fucking read some goddamn Russian poetry, dude. Like, it was so, like, the big fire at the architectural college was, like, I was seriously laughing. Um, it was just really good. I need to start jamming through here. Uh, okay, um, selected poems of Malcolm Lowry. A couple things in here were interesting. I would give him another look. Reality Sandwiches, Allen Ginsberg, My Alba was another really good poem. I was like, Ginsberg, what the fuck, dude? Um, Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara is number 19. Frank O'Hara, I made fun of on, during, when I was reading the first poem. After that, I was on board. Frank O'Hara, he's getting a purchase, just like the first patch in book. And then finally, I got all scared because number 20 is selected poems of who? Philip Lamantia, the guy from that book. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm going to have to do some research on this. But again, this might be earlier than that. But I'm going to fucking blow your mind right now. He knows how to fucking write poetry. He knows how to fucking write something and not have it all be just confused metaphors. He does it. Both poems in here were fucking good. By Philip Lamantia. They were good. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck is happening right now? So I'm confused. Um, I'm going to have to read him some more. But anyway, I hope this you dug this. Let me know if you know anything about these guys. I would love to hear about it. I would love to talk about it. I'm actually super fucking excited to pick up some of these guys' books. I'm going to be looking for them, and I will let you know what I find. And um, I don't know, in like a week or so, we might do 20 through 40 and see how we do. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.